Hi there, welcome back to my channel. It's James here, I hope you're doing okay, um, and welcome to a different space. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you will realize that I have never not filmed in the same space. Um, so this is a big deal. This is my partner's place. Uh, I thought it was about time to show you some of the plants that we have in a different space. Um, but also just to talk you through some of the propagation things that I'm doing at the moment, because there are some exciting things happening here that I can't show you at my place because the plants aren't there. So we're gonna jump into it quite quickly because I've already tried to film this three times and things went wrong. Thing, my day is, things need to happen. So we're gonna do that. Right, I've got three, four little thing, propagation things to show you. And then the main event is the Melanochrysum that I bought a couple of months ago now. Um, I'll pop a picture up of how it looked when I first got it. And then now I'll put some pictures of what it looked like after a little while, if I can find them, um, after a day actually. Um, so I'm going to show you the progress of that, what it, how its root rot has progressed, uh, how its general growth has progressed. Um, so we're going to get straight into it. I'm going to show you the first one. Whew, so right here we have what is called a Syngonium wenlandii. It is a velvet leaf Syngonium, which is slightly unusual I think. I haven't seen too many other velvet leaf Syngoniums. And it's one of the only ones that kind of attracted me. I only have two. I have this one and I have the um, the variegated one, the albo variegated one, uh, white variegated one. Um, so yeah, it's very cool. I got this literally as a stick. If I pop, take it out of the water and show you that, you will be able to see where the stick started up here and where it ended down there. And that was literally all it was. Zero roots, zero leaves, just a stick. And now look at it. That was probably about four months ago. Um, it's quite a fast grower, I would say. Uh, it's got some all right roots. They had a little bit of a moment with root rot. I'm not really sure why. Um, so I had to take them out and dry them out, but they are back to normal. Pretty good. I still have it in water. It's probably about time to transplant it. I will wait a little bit longer though, because it seems like it's doing quite well in there. Um, I'm always quite careful with my water propagating. I change the water regularly. And I also make sure that when I do change it, I put at least, well, I put a drop of normal houseplant fertilizer um, just so that the plants have the nutrients they need to keep on growing. I have noticed when I don't do that with plants, they kind of get to a certain point and then they're like, eh, I can't do anything else here. So they really don't do anything else until I transplant them. This has not been the case with the Thingonium. As you can see, it has a new leaf coming through right there. So it is doing quite well. Plant number one. We're gonna move on swiftly to our second little water propagation thing. Um, in here I have two plants. I have, to begin with, in a shot glass, obviously, of course. Um, I have a, come out please. I have an Epipremnum pinnatum Cebu blue. Do the focusing things, do the focusing things. There we go. It is definitely a Cebu blue. You see a lot of Epipremnum pinnatum going around that is not actually Cebu blue, it is definitely green. This is a Cebu blue, as you can tell from that glaucous leaf, which means sort of a silvery, bluey sort of leaf. Um, it is gonna stay in water for a fair while longer. It literally only has two tiny little roots, um, but it has done very well for, I've had it about the same amount of time as that Syngonium there, and uh, this is all it's done. Um, I got it when it arrived, it had no leaves, it had no roots, it was just this little shriveled stick and I was pretty sure it wasn't going to make it but I stuck it in some water alongside some other things I was propagating, kind of forgot about it and uh, it's doing its thing. So hopefully it will carry on doing its thing and I'll get a few more leaves. Um, it's very, very cool. I love an Epipremnum pinnatum. I have the variegated one as you've probably seen in some other videos. Um, I love it. Right. I will put that down there as I show you this next one. This guy is a philodendron gigas, 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 um, big old philodendron. It's a velvet leaf, very similar. Come on, do the focusing. There we go. It's very similar to like the melanochrysum in its immature form. It's slightly longer, I would say, um, and it has less of the sinus at the top. It's more sort of a rounded leaf. That does change as it matures. Um, if you haven't seen a mature gigas before, go and Google it because they're really, really beautiful. Uh, this is one of a few different plants I've got. I've got two sort of more or less established ones and then I've got quite a few little cuttings like this that I'm propagating. Um, yeah, I love them. They're one of my favorites. This and Milano's there, just like so timeless, 
timeless philodendrons. I actually have the mother plant right here, one of the mother plants. It's been split in half, so this is the slightly smaller half. The other half is at home. As you can see, it's on my first ever moss pole that I ever made, um, and it's not pretty, but it does the job. Oh, oh, where can I put this? Ah. So yeah, this is the mother plant. It's got some relatively big leaves. This is the lower part of the plant, so when I got it, it had these kind of battered leaves there. Um, but it did a lot of growing. This is one of the new leaves. When I cut this plant, so this was the base, it was probably about that far up above, so I snipped it directly in half, got a three cutting, uh, three node cutting that I've turned into another plant, and then I've got four single node cuttings um, that I've been doing things with. So it's a prolific plant. They grow very, very fast, much faster than Milano, pretty much, apart from Mykins, one of the fastest plants that I've got. There is a Mykins there, I don't know if you can see it in the shadows in the background, but that is a huge plant. Um, I used to have it hanging next to the window here and it was just draping on the floor. Uh, so I had to pop it up there and we've kind of wound the vines around the pot like two or three times because when I hold it up, if everything's unwound, it just like it trails on the floor. Very cool, very fast grower. Right, we have, oh, let me put this guy back in there before he desiccates. And we'll move on to this little jar of magic. Um, you may have heard about this if you've been watching for a while, just mentioned it in passing. This is my Crystallinum nursery. It is very small um, and it is getting very crowded. So it's about time I repot these guys. Um, I'll show you what it looks like from the outside. So you can see some of the Crystallinum markings are popping up there. Um, I basically just stuck them in moss and then you can see that they are doing quite well. The roots are coming through the bottom. I'll show you through the top. Yeah, I have no idea how I'm going to get everyone out of there. Um, probably I had a play earlier because I was thinking about doing it for this video, um, but I thought it would probably be a little bit too like faffy and too much for everyone to deal with. Um, I was practicing just playing around with chopsticks trying to pinch and pull, so I think that's probably the way I'm going to do it to avoid breaking anything but I'm a little bit worried. Um, I should have done it earlier. I feel like I should not put them in a jar. That's basically what I should have done uh, because like it's got a small opening and they're bigger plants, stupid me. Anyway, the next time. Right, we're gonna move on to the final plant for today. Uh, I was gonna say this is not gonna be a long video but it already has been a long video. Let me just readjust my leg because it's going dead. Um, I have a Milana Chrysum. I showed you the picture before. You saw how glorious it was before. I am now gonna show you what has happened to those two leaves that you will have seen. So leaf number one, they're really beautiful. And obviously I'm weird for keeping them, but I thought it was important just to have a memory of the glory that once was. This is one of the leaves. I think this was the slightly bigger one, um, a much thinner leaf, but really, really big. Look at the size of that. I love the sound it makes. They're like paper. It's really amazing. Um, so that's leaf number one. Um, I just decided to preserve it. And the second one is right here. It's a slightly broader leaf, a little bit heftier. Yeah, it's a little bit more solid, um, but that's the second leaf. I don't know why they still have these green patches in there. Anyway, um, so that is what I was working with initially. They're really, really beautiful. Um, this first one was basically completely flawless. I hadn't seen a Milano Chrysum, a big Milano without a lot of damage on it before. This is the first leaf I did see. Unfortunately, the roots were less undamaged. This is kind of a good point to say. I feel like um, as houseplants get more and more popular, as just tropical plants in general get more and more popular, um, and people are asking more and more money for them, uh, if you're running a shop, I think it's really important that you take the time to make sure that the plants that you're selling are healthy. Um, yeah, I don't think it's it's okay to, unless someone knows exactly what they're going into and they're okay with that, I don't think it's really okay to order a plant and forward it immediately because you don't know what it's gone through shipping wise, you don't know where it came from exactly. Um, and I think unless you take the time to make sure the roots are healthy, the growth is stable, then you can't really ask that amount of money from people knowing that the plant might die. Um, it's not targeted at anyone particular. I know that some people do it really, really well. I've had some amazing experiences with people who do that same thing. But I, generally, as a rule, I think it might be helpful to maybe keep a plant for a week or two just to make sure it's doing okay and then forward it on. Um, yeah, just a thought. 
Right, so this is the Milano now. Look at that caterpillar, mega, mega, mega caterpillar. When I got it, it was maybe that long and it has definitely done some growing. Because I already filmed this video before, I have already taken this plant out of the moss, so it's less exciting for you. Uh, initially, the appeal was that it was the first time I was looking at the roots since I popped it in here. I have now already looked at the roots, so I'm going to pretend for you. Um, you can't even see the roots from the outside, which you could before because they were pressed up against the bag because I've messed everything around, but let's have a little go. So I'm going to open this up. Um, I'll just explain briefly as I do that what kind of a state it was in when I got it. It was sad. So I picked up the plant from across London from where I live um, and it was a cold day. I had to take it through public transport back home um, so it was not, not the best for a tropical plant under the best circumstances. But I also noticed when I brought it home that the moss that it was in, it was in sphagnum, was very very wet like dripping wet so what I did straight away was I took as much of the moss out as I could I'm um, on my way home actually this I've noticed before um, and I put tissue inside a cup so I had the whole thing with moss and tissue in a cup so that it could kind of wick some of that moisture away and then when I got home I uh, repotted it as quickly as possible but it was not fast enough apparently the combination of the cold and the wet meant that pretty much all of the roots rotted well all of the roots not pretty much every single root fell off um, and the stem started to rot and I got home and the stem was shriveled and soft in places and I was just sure that the plant was gonna die fortunately the seller was very very understanding he was very helpful um, otherwise it could have been a disaster financially but uh, it was not and uh, I still have the plant and after some treatment it has uh, really leapt back so this is what we're looking at now. It has not got a massive amount of root growth yet, but it has one, two, three healthy white growing roots, which is literally, it's enough. Um, all I wanted was one root, because once it has one root, one healthy root, and no stem rot, you've got to they've got a plant that has a chance anyway. Um, so that was, would have, blah, 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 that was what I was looking for. And that is what I have. I'm very happy with it. Uh, I feel like I said more the last time I recorded this, but I can't remember what I said. So uh, basically what I did with this is I just stuck it in water for the first two weeks. So the entire stem with zero root and a shriveled stem, I stuck it in water. And I think that's probably what saved the stem because it really was able to take up a lot of the water that it needed without any rotting issues. Um, and then after those two weeks, I took the stem, wrapped the entire thing in sphagnum, which is basically what it was there, like there and stuck it in a pot, stuck it over the radiator and left it. And uh, the, because, it's so, because it's in a uh, Ziploc bag, there was no danger of the moss drying out from the radiator. It was just like an extra boost of warmth to keep things growing. So I really think that helped a lot. And uh, it's come very far. This caterpillar is ready to burst. I think within the next couple of weeks, we'll start having a leaf coming through there. Um, it certainly won't be the size of the previous leaves. I'm complete I've accepted that but uh, it should still be quite exciting to see what comes from that plant so yeah this is just a slightly well it's basically the same kind of video but in a slightly different setting uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, I hope you got something out of it I don't really know what I was offering here apart from showing you plants and vague information on how I saved them uh, let me know down in the comments below what you'd like to see I know that a lot of people want to see like a greenhouse tour or a plant tour at some point that will come. It's not super high up my priority list just because, um, I don't know, I like, I don't know. We shall see. If many, many, many of you ask, we will see. Um, and yeah, if you wanna see updates on these plants, go follow my Instagram at Slug Plants. I'll pop that here and uh, subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell thing. And uh, yeah, I will see you soon. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.